There we go. We are officially recording. So AdWorks for everybody. Um, our motto is brilliantly simple digital marketing. Um, you'll probably hear me refer back to this a couple times throughout the presentation. What this really means, right, is we want to make sure you can get digital ads in front of the right people across the network, right networks in as easy a way as possible, right? It should be automated. It should take four steps. Nothing should be complicated about it. Simple, but making sure that it is also at the same time in front of the right people on the right networks. Um, so we'll go into more details about what we provide, what your company is doing for you already on there, some of the cool add-ons, the details like that. But I do want everybody to kind of remember our motto, brilliantly simple digital marketing. All of this is supposed to be easy, simple, but super targeted to the right audience across the right networks. Jumping into a couple digital statistics. Um, so I like to review this at the beginning. I think we're all aware of this trend, but it is kind of shocking to look at the stats. Um, so I think part of this came during the pandemic, right? A lot more screen time, a lot more meetings across computers, things like that, a little bit less in person, um, but also just the way we live our lives, right? I don't know how many people are like this on this call as well, but I wake up in the morning, I check my phone. Uh, I spend my day on my laptop, on my phone, making calls, searching the internet. I get home, I watch TV. I'm glued to a screen and I know that. And I think a lot of people are following those same behaviors. So you can see, this is just kind of a breakdown of 2015 to 2020, a 50% increase in time spent connected to media. Um, again, I think it lines up with all of our behaviors. I'm sure everybody on this call is kind of in that same place, right? Where we're just, we're glued to these things. They're important and, and it's the way we live our lives these days. So that went through 2020. Uh, kind of surprise, surprise though, we're seeing it continue to increase, right? And again, I think it fits with our behaviors, but it's up another 33% uh, from recent reports, right? So we're now about 16 hours a day. People are spent on some sort of media device, right? Whether it be phone, watching TV on their computers, right? So we're, we're truly in this digital age. Um, and so outside of this, right, I mean, AdWorks is a digital marketing platform, but we've seen a rise in digital advertising across all everything, right? Whether it's AdWorks, what, whatever it is, people have started really investing in digital advertising these days as the screen time has jumped up as all this has happened, just because it's a great way to reach an audience in a very targeted format on things that they're using all the time, right? So jumping into kind of what's in it for you and what AdWorks can do. There's a couple different kind of platforms here, right? And one of them was we'll cover what your company's doing for you already, which is incredible. There's some things you can take advantage of yourself. But the core ideas around this, right, are a competitive advantage. So being able to get in front of people first, being able to use it in listing presentations, keeping sellers happy on listings, especially right now, right, as the market starts to shift a little bit, things are on market maybe longer than people have been used to previously over the past two years keeping sellers happy during that time period, uh, and then access to additional automated services, right, for that competitive advantage idea of, all right, how do you make sure that you reach that seller first? How are you in front of them at that time? So this is kind of the, the core basis of what we look at through there. So jumping into what your company provides and how cool that is, it's an automated listing service that is based off a data feed, right? And, and what this means is, Behind the scenes, there's all these intricate pieces happening where data is being sent to us. We're compiling that data. We're then using that data to target specific geographic areas with a very specific ad to that listing to you and all of that. Um, but again, it's, it's a completely automated process. This is part of that brilliantly simple, keeping AdWorks easy, keeping the digital advertising easy is your company is providing a service that automates this for you, right? So without you lifting the finger, that new listing ad will create, it'll launch, it'll target the right pe people across the right platforms. So some additional info, info on this, right? It's a one week automated ad. It gets thousands of impressions over that week. It's automatically placed across the Facebook, Instagram, and web. Um, Facebook, Instagram, I think a little bit more obvious what those are, right? Those are social media platforms, right? The ads appear on them. By the web, we're talking about 96% of the advertisable internet. Um, so it could be Wall Street Journal, New York Times, ESPN. It could also be much more local news sites as well. Basically, if that website has public advertisable space on it, we can place an ad on there. And that's part of the targeting. Just some details 
about what's generated right it, it takes about 24 hours we say 36 but it's really about 24 now for the ad to generate and that's just based on the dots connecting right you put it in the mls it gets caught in a data feed the data feed gets sent to us it gets created so depending on when you're entering into the mls it can take a little bit longer um for that ad to automatically create but again it does happen without you doing anything you just kind of follow your normal process that ad will create and target and then it's for only residential properties over sixty thousand, right so it's for those residential properties um and again they're that price limit and it, it doesn't affect a lot um but i think it is important to kind of process right for an automated listing it's those over that advantage On these pieces, there's there's a couple kind of add-on pieces of information for them, right? So one is the targeting, how we're getting it in front of that right network, in front of that right audience. We target a, a geolocation around the address of the property. And then within that address, right, we're, we're targeting people that have specifically looked at real estate, right? So this idea that people have gone to a mortgage calculator, they're looking at listings online, they're um, looking at moving companies, right? The kind of behaviors that we're associating with an upcoming real estate transaction, those are the specific people that we're targeting in that radius with this ad. And again, I, I said I'd say it a lot, but that brilliantly simple digital advertising, right? We also want it to be really powerful in front of the right audience. So that's what we're doing here, right? We're geolocating the ad, and then we're also making sure it's targeting the right audience across those platforms of the web, Facebook, and Instagram. Included with this targeting and, and more of an add-on piece, but something that I find incredibly important and something that we get such good feedback on is you have the ability to add the seller to these campaigns. Um, so it's not an automated process. It's, it's something that can be manually done on your side. And we'll review that in a second in your account. And I know there's a couple other processes going on internally that you guys have to help you with this. But the idea here is you have the listing, why not update your seller with that advertising that you're doing for them, right? And so two things happen based on this. You add your seller, they get an email that says, hey, Nathan Kynes is doing this advertising for you, check it out. It shows them the listing ad, it allows them to interact with it, but then it also works to actively retarget them on the back end with that same digital ad, right? And so the idea here is kind of the proof in the pudding saying, right, we really want them to know the advertising that again, you are doing for them. It's not us, you're doing this advertising for them, but we also want them to see it on their favorite website, right? So we kind of refer to it as a magic moment. The idea is I'm an avid ESPN reader. Right now I'm following my Virginia Tech Hokies in basketball because we're awful in football these days. But I go on and I go read an article about our football team, or sorry, our basketball team, and I see my house online, right? And so the idea really is to give them that full experience, the idea of, hey, you're doing this advertising for them and then letting them see it out live and about and how it works. So again, this is an add-on. I'll show you how to do this in an account in a little bit, what it looks like, how that works. But again, I think a very important piece of this automated listing component and a piece that people always don't always take advantage of. So something I highly recommend focusing on and taking advantage of in this process. So again, your company's providing for this. It's completely automated. There's nothing you do need, you need to do to make it happen. It's targeting a very specific audience in a very specific geographic location. The one piece that you do need to be involved with though is that seller component, making sure your seller gets updated, is able to see their ad and get retargeted with that ad. And again, I'll show you what that looks like internally. Any questions on the group kind of on that follow-up of the automated listings, how that works, how it can be interacted with, anything like that? Awesome, awesome. Well, again, I know that was kind of a review, but I did want to hit on it again, right? Because it, it is a program that's being provided for you. It's automated and, and something on the seller component I highly recommend taking advantage of. On the other side of this is we offer additional advertisement components, right? That can be used to get your name, your brand, your face in front of an audience, right? And so these are just two NAR statistics that I include. The idea here is kind of back to my previous discussion about how much we're online, how much we're on phones, how much we're on computers these days, our behavior is very associated with that in terms of real estate as well, right? And really anything we do, like my first approach, if I have a question or I'm looking for my something is to pull up my phone and Google it, or maybe pull out my laptop and Google it, right? And learn more details. 
And so these NAR statistics are about that same thing, right? People are spending time looking at real estate online before they ever reach out to anybody. Um, and it says about two weeks time. I, I think that continues to run around that same trend. But one of the more interesting sides of this, right, is that 70% of those people just go with the first person they call. They've done their research, right? They've been out and about doing their stuff. Uh, and so they go with that first person they reach out to. So our other campaigns are really about that personal branding and how you become that first person. And there's three different models. I'm going to cover two in the slideshow and talk about the third a little bit more as we review an account, just because it's not as great to describe in a PowerPoint presentation. But the two in the PowerPoint we're going to review are these ads by zip code and ads for your sphere. And then the third is a TV service that we provide that it's a little bit more out there and we'll run through it a little bit, but there's some cool ways to use it as well that I want to discuss. But if we start off first on this ads by zip code, um, it, it's kind of exactly what you think, right? It's targeted to a digital audience in the zip codes of your choosing. And as I reflect kind of on this idea of building brand, right? Building messaging. Again, I have some statistics to pull out on kind of brand messaging and how that can apply. So again, we're on computers, we're on phones nonstop. We're doing our research. We're doing all these different things. They've started doing kind of studies on ads then and the retention of those ads and that messaging. Um, and again, I think this comes back to the idea that I can guarantee all of us today have already seen a multitude of ads. I would say almost 40 to 50 ads, whether it's on our phone, on a website we were on, right? Or if we were watching the news this morning, whatever it is, we've all seen a ton of advertisements this morning, but I can almost guarantee that we remember maybe one of them, right? Or maybe none of them. I, I This morning, I'm honestly, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on remembering any of the ads that I've seen, but I know that I've seen them. Uh, and so these are retention studies that like Google's doing, Meta's doing, Facebook, right? On kind of retention of advertisement and what it takes. And so you can see this is just kind of a curved graph, right? Breaking it down that as soon as you see it, you're retaining it. Almost immediately, there's an exponential drop off. And by seven days out, right? You're, you're remembering almost nothing of that message and retaining any of it. And so what these studies are starting to kind of break down is, is repetition how much you need to keep your message in front of an audience to make sure that they remember it. And so the keys re really here are just specific repetition of advertisements, messaging, whatever it is, keeping it consistent can really increase these retention rates of information. So you can see again, similar chart, but just extending it out based on repetition of that si similar messaging and kind of the way people are able to remember that messaging afterwards. And so that repetition being key, getting your name. And I think in real estate, right, it's really your branding. It's your face. It's your name. It's your message. Keeping that message consistent and consistently getting it in front of an audience is incredibly important for people to remember, retain who you are, what you do, and what you're doing in that market, right? And so this is really where the zip code advertising comes into play from a geographic standpoint. Um, and the real, the big thing I like to say on these ads, right, is they are, are not lead generation. They're literally a digital billboard and they're really meant to be used, um, with other forms of marketing as well, right? Let's say you're doing mailers to an area. You can add kind of a digital component there for that setup. So these are not lead generation. Um, uh, and I really, really want to stress that because we've had people, right. That want to come in. They are clickable ads, right? You can send them to a website. But really the point of these is brand advertising to that point of consistent messaging, right? Making sure that you're hitting a specific geographic location with your name, your face, and your message, again, targeted to an audience, right? That's looking at real estate. So truly a digital billboard meant to build your brand awareness in an area. And again, I, I highly recommend if you're going to use the zip code advertising, it's probably meant to be used with other forms of advertising you're doing in that area like mailers or other things like that, it is very much a complementary component. Um, and so that zip code advertising, again, a digital billboard that can really help complement other things you're doing in that area and help build your brand advertising. The other piece we call our sphere of influence advertising. Uh, and it really came about again because of another NAR survey that came about. 
Um, and this survey is a survey of people, right, who are saying they would use the same agent again. So NAR sent out a study. They said, hey, how many of you would use the same person that you used previously? 89%, right? So a great number, a high number, um, very positive. They then sent out a study of how many people actually used that same agent again, and it was 12%, right? And again, this, this kind of reverts back to that idea of specific messaging. There's so much information available. There's so many agents available, right? That to retain that messaging is incredibly important. Um, and that's a huge disparity, right? That 89% to 12% is a massive disparity of usage. And so we came up with this idea of what we call a sphere of influence campaign, a custom audience campaign. And the idea is you can take previous clients emails and use those emails as their digital footprint and target those specific people with the digital ad. Um, and for me, this is kind of one of the more powerful forms of digital advertising. Uh, I'm a bit of a, a data nerd. I believe data is power. Um, and so th there's a couple ways that I, I think about these ads for your sphere in a sense, right? One is just like we broke down previous clients, you toss them in there, you let it run, you add new ones as they come up, but really it's just a consistent top of mind campaign, making sure that they are remembering you, remembering your face, remembering your name, referring you to others as they speak to you. It truly is just a background top of mind campaign, meant to be easy and just stay out there. The other way is because data is power, if you have emails and you know the specifics of those people that you have emails for, you can get a very targeted digital message to a very targeted audience, right? And what I mean is if you know specifics, right, of the people you're targeting, that message can be tailored to them. And so we people, we see people use these campaigns, right, to go after those specific audiences with a specific message um, because that, again, is going to help people retain that message. It's going to stick with them and it's going to stay in front of them. And, I, and again, I think that's behavior that we all see when we're online, right, and we see advertisements. When you're out there, when you see something that speaks to you at the time, that's the powerful message and that's what stays in front of you. So these ads for Sphere campaign really are, if you have a database, if you have a list of contacts, you can get a specific ad in front of those specific contacts using their email as a digital footprint. It doesn't send them an email, it's still a digital ad that's on Facebook, mobile, the web, um, but it uses that email for targeting purposes. So again, I, I think this is a great way if, again, you're trying to get build brand awareness, you're trying to get your name and face in front of people and an audience, this is a great way to do it, right? Because it's so targeted and it's the message that you want to get to a very specific audience. So that's what we call our ads for your sphere. Um, so again, two different platforms that can be used within that setup to build name recognition, brand awareness through two different methods. Uh, again, I really like to highlight that the zip code advertisements are a digital billboard. They're meant to be used in concert with kind of other advertising in that area, the digital component of it. The ads for your sphere, super targeted, built on a database, built on a list you have, and can be used really as a top of mind campaign with previous clients or a very targeted advertisement for leads, right? To help with kind of that lead conversion or targeted advertisement to an audience you've had trouble getting in front of, things like that. It usually uses that email to get a targeted message in front of them. So two different components, right? Uh, and again, I'm gonna jump into AdWork, show what they look like in accounts, show the way to use these and all like that. But do we have any questions from the group on purely the, the side of what sphere campaigns are, what zip code campaigns are, what automated listing campaigns are, how you can take advantage of them? I have a question. Yeah. Um, what's the, for the lead, um, for the targeted sphere, uh, sir, so our uh, marketing, what is the lead conversion? Do you have that kind of data? So that, that's a great question. So we've done some studies and there's actually a study that I, I could send out to you guys on what we've done with other teams that have used it. Again, I think it that's going to really depend on multiple different features, right? So like the idea is to incre increase your lead conversion by having your name and that hook of your sales pitch in front of that audience consistently while you're making those calls, while you're getting in front of them. Uh, I, I can deliver the studies and what we've seen kind of on average, but I don't wanna say, right, if you automatically sign up for a sphere, you're gonna go to 30% more closed leads, right? The idea again is that brand advertising, that message in front of an audience, 
and having that hook of your pitch in front of them consistently for those leads while you're reaching out. Any other questions from the group? All right, well, let's jump into an account and what that looks like. So from the AdWorks perspective, right, you have purewest.adworks.com is how you would access anything from the AdWorks side. Um, you can log in directly through here. You can see your different platforms. Um, and that login option in the upper right can corner, you toss your, your company email in there. If you don't know your password, you can reset it through here. Uh, but that's how you would access AdWorks. When an automated listing campaign comes in through your company, you'll receive an email that morning that lets you know, hey, this advertisement has been launched for you. Sign in, check it out, and get more details on there. Once you've logged in, uh, and I'm gonna use David as an example today for this, this is what you'll see. You'll see your account, it'll say welcome. It'll have some options of how you wanna advertise your business today, right? So this is where the zip code sphere campaigns are, that kind of stuff. Below here, you'll see additional details on the campaigns that are currently running. Um, so this is where the automated listing campaigns live. You can see, right, that David's got two that are currently live. He's actually got the seller information included on both of these already, which is awesome. But if he didn't, you would see a button here that says, hey, add your seller information. It's as easy as clicking that button, tossing in the name of the client, the client email address, adding it in, and they'll start receiving updates on that advertisement and also be actively retargeted by it. You can see a little bit more on the details, right, of what that would look like. So if you hit manage campaign in here, you can see underneath it tracks views, it tracks clicks. That's what the client will receive. They'll be able to see what the ad looks like for that targeting. Um, and then in here also, you can make edits to this ad, right? So let's say you wanted to reduce the price, right? Or let's say it's sold or something like that super quickly. You can make edits, right? To make it an open house ad, a just sold ad, something like that to, to change really the messaging of that advertisement. So any kind of interactions with your ad, any interactions needed on campaigns, can be done through your account and this my campaign section and they'll all be living underneath here on the launch side right here's your options start ad for sphere sphere start ads by zip code and then this third piece that i was going to cover kind of live on here that i didn't have in the slideshow is called streaming tv commercials so it's kind of ads for tv and what this is, is the idea that we can launch campaigns very specifically targeted um, on streaming television. And so what I mean by streaming television is, let's say you are watching um, on a Roku TV, you have an app for ESPN on there, right? When you're watching through there, that's streaming television, right? It's basically your internet connected TV and the audience you're on there. Because that TV is connected to the internet, there's an IP address for it and we can target very specifically that area. So the setup for this is a little bit different than kind of your, your general TV commercial setup, right? Where you have to target uh, a network, right? Or an audience or across a large geographic kind of setup. For this, you can get very targeted in one to 25 mile radiuses, drop different pins and target based off that. And you can also upload your own commercials here. I, again, where I, where I say this is a little bit, um, outside the normal usage it's a little bit more expensive from an adworks perspective uh it does run kind of from 1400 to 3600 um for a quarter to a year but what we've seen people use it for is luxury listings um and then use it to display those luxury listings right in listing presentations so one of the great ways i've seen it used before is somebody makes a 30 second clip for every luxury listing they're presenting and then in every listing presentation they go to after they say hey i can run a commercial for you for this property check out the ones i've run before and then they show that breakdown so it's a little bit outside the box um but it is a, a cool service that can be used right in that concert with luxury listings and presenting those in that breakdown i think that that brings me full circle right to this idea that I really wanted to bring across through the, the digital advertising side and how much people are on screens, right? Is really this idea that 
you've got these automated campaigns coming in for listings, right? That your company provides, which are excellent. They're a great way for branding. They get your name and face out there, right? Around every listing as well. And you're repeating that same message to that audience, right? To help be remembered across platforms that people are using incredibly consistently. Um, and so this digital advertising platform really is meant to be an easy way to get your message in front of the audience that you want to get in front of, whether it be ge geographic, based on a list, targeted as a listing, whatever it may be. We want to automate as much of it as possible or give you one to three step processes to launch these other campaigns through AdWorks, right? Uh, and so the listing parts of this completely automated, run without kind of needing your engagement besides the seller component of this. Other campaigns should be three to four step processes to launch through your AdWorks account. But again, we're trying to keep it easy, trying to keep it super simple and make sure that these ads are targeted to the right audiences though. What other questions can I answer for the group around AdWorks, around kind of the digital advertising platform, anything on that side? Anything from you, Ryan, over there that needs to be added in or, or questions from that group? Billing test questions. Awesome. <laughs> um, so I'm newer to the company, so this other people might already know this, but I guess um, for pricing on the ads by zip code or whatnot, is that like you can pay per week or you can say, I want to spend a hundred dollars, you know, however many impressions that gets, like how, how is the pricing built? Yep. So on the zip codes and sphere campaigns, uh, it's all quarterly or annual setups. Um, the zip codes, the pricing will vary based on the zip code, but an example for a quarter is you're going to spend from like 160 to maybe $230 for a quarter to run a zip code campaign. The spear campaigns are based on number of impressions that you're running. Um, and again, for a quarter campaign at 2,500 impressions, it's going to be about 225 for a year. It's going to be 807 on the sphere. Can I ask yes. a quick question? Yes. This is uh, Brian Heck in Bozeman. Um, I was curious when you target zip codes outside of, let's say, a major uh, a metro area outside in another state like Los Angeles, mm -hmm. for instance, is there any way, do you have any way of screening people that are looking specifically in Montana or is it just people who are engaged in real estate in Los Angeles and that's it? Yeah, so it's really based on um, that geographic location. And really what this is the difference of is kind of, a digital um, uh, ad versus kind of SEO, right? Which is search engine optimization. Ours is much more of a, a digital platform of ads appearing in that area. So ours will be based purely on the geography of it. So if you're targeting in Los Angeles, it's gonna target people based on their behaviors of looking at real estate in that area. It won't specifically be people looking in Montana. Um, for that, you probably have to go in more of an SEO direction, right? Which is based on search and things like that on that method. Nathan, is there like an ideal size of a sphere campaign as far as like the number of email addresses? Yes, absolutely. That's a great question. Appreciate that, Aaron. Um, so 300 contacts is what you're going to need to maximize performance on the Facebook's Instagram side of this. If you can get to 500, that's going to be kind of your maximum performance on a 2,500 impression campaign. Um, so that 300 to 500 range, if you're going above 1200 contacts, you're probably going to want to investigate additional impressions. And the idea is this, right? You're basically dividing impressions by contacts, right? So if you have 2,500 impressions, 1200 contacts, those people are seeing you twice a month, which, which could be enough, right? For previous clients, right? If you're just trying to give a gentle top of mind, like that's probably fine. If you're using it much more on the kind of lead conversion or, or strong brand awareness, you're going to want more impressions per contact per month. Um, so the way I really think about it is you're dividing out that contacts by impressions per month to get an idea of how many times each person's seen you. And again, that 300 to 500 is for maximum performance. When you start going over that, you're really going to want to start thinking of, okay, how many times do I want these people to be seeing my face, my name, my message a month? And you can kind of break that down from there.
Cool. There are also some some exciting updates coming up that uh, these are actually things that I owe Aaron and Ryan on right now, but we're going to move. Um, what they've been pushing right is moving to a, a motion design for these audiences, right? So right now we do static display ads. Um, we're going to move to a motion design for these um, and coming soon from that side. So those will be exciting. And again, Aaron and Ryan have been pushing for y'all on that side, and we're going to move to that very soon. So excited about that as well for you guys. Awesome. Anything else from the group? Anything else I can deliver? Again, we AdWorks, we try to keep it simple. We try to keep it easy. Nothing should be more than four steps. Everything should be as automated as possible. Highly recommend using the seller component of the listing ads. I think it's one of the most missed pieces of those, but I can't tell you how many trade shows I've been at, how many conferences where people come up to me and they talk about how much their sellers love it. It seems simple. It seems easy but they really do like being able to see their listing ads get retargeted by that kind of stuff. Um, so a component I highly recommend taking advantage of. Well, awesome. there's no more questions. Like I said, I really appreciate you guys letting me jump on today, talk through this. Uh, it's been great to meet everybody. I appreciate the questions. Great questions from everybody on here. Uh, and if additional things do come up, please reach out call our customer service team, ask questions, always happy to help. Thanks, Nate. We really appreciate it. Good to yeah. see you. Thanks, Nate. Thanks all. Good to see everybody. Have a good one.